Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time series is really great and really long. I mean, it's so long, he didn't even live to finish it. Jordan died between books 11 and 12, leaving Brandon Sanderson to complete the final book, which Sanderson turned into three separate volumes. Clocking in at 14 books and one prequel, Wheel of Time is a beast. A beast that we're gonna summarize. Wish me luck. Hundreds of years ago, the ultimate bad guy, Shaitan, was thrown in prison by the creator, but due to some screw-ups by the Aes Sedai, they're kind of like the Jedi of Wheel of Time, Shaitan was able to bust out. Fun fact, Shaitan was played by Billy Zane in an epically bad Wheel of Time pilot made a few years ago. I have come for you. Ah. Anywho, a powerful Aes Sedai named Luz Theron Telamon, aka the dragon, beat Shaitan, locked him up again in a shadowly made prison, died a madman, and that brings us to Wheel of Time, book one, The Eye of the World. That's right, that was all prologue, baby. Okay, so we meet our hero Randall Thor and his friends Matt, Perrin, and Egwene at night. They're living in the peaceful two rivers when an Aes Sedai named Moraine and her warder, bodyguard, Lon, come and whisk the kids away. Moraine thinks Rand just might be important. The crew heads to the city of Camelin. On the way, Perrin meets a dude who's like, I have a special connection with wolves and I think you might too kid, okay. In Camelin, the gang meets Princess Elaine Tracan, one of Rand's three future wives, we'll explain later, and her brother Gawain, and also other people that we just don't have time to care about. Rand, Matt, and Perrin all have the same crazy nightmares, and Moraine realizes that what she suspected all along is true. Rand is the dragon reborn, aka Luz Theron, reincarnated. He's gonna save the world in 13 more books time. Book two, the great hunt is so called because everyone is hunting the Horn of Valir, which Rand will need to blow at Tarman Gaidan, basically Armageddon. Nine even Egwene go to Tar Valon to train his eyes to die, and we meet Min, a cool clairvoyant who Rand later marries. Again, more on Rand's complicated love life later. Rand beats more bad guys, and in the process reveals to the crowd that he is the Dragon Reborn, which is why book three is called the Dragon Reborn. That breaks free from the demon who possessed him in book one. Oh, did we mention that? Perrin falls in love, Rand kills another bad guy, and the ladies start hunting evil eyes to die known as the Black Aja. In book four, The Shadow Rising, Rand heads to his ancestral homeland and meets the Aeol, the red-headed desert people from whom he's descended. They assign badass Aeol warrior Avienda to watch over Rand. Surprise, they fall in love. Guys, Rand falls in love a lot. Perrin goes back to the Two Rivers to defend it from invasion, and he is fully telepathic with wolves by now. Cool. Book five, The Fires of Heaven, deals a lot with the dream world of Telerenriad, which is very cool and very complicated, so I don't know. <laughs> In book six, Lord of Chaos, everyone is trying to either kiss Rand's ass or kill him, mostly kill him. The Aes Sedai are divided, and Egwene is named the Amaryllin Seat, the leader of the good faction. Egwene's Aes Sedai swear fealty to Rand because you gotta stick with the dragon you came in with, right? Right. During the Crown of Swords, book seven, Elaine, Nynaeve, Avienda, and Matt search for a bull that is controlling the weather. In book eight, The Path of Daggers, they use the bull to stop climate change. A fantasy novel indeed. Okay, book nine, Winter's Heart, resolves Rand's complicated love life. His three lady companions, Min, Elaine, and Avienda, make him their warder. The ladies are all friends and everyone is sort of cool with just sharing Rand. And because of the warder bond, they can keep tabs on him, including when he is, ah, uh, intimate with one of the others. Very, very free love rules the day. Book 10, Crossroads of Twilight, and Book 11, Knife of Dreams, are all about the gang trying to hold on to the power they've gained. Elaine is queen, Egwene is Amaryllin seat, oh, and Matt and Rand deal with the Shantan, a terrifying nation of people who have been in the other books, but we haven't talked about. And by the way, this whole time since way back in Eye of the World, Rand has had the voice of Luz Theron in his head, slowly driving him insane. It's at this point that author Robert Jordan dies IRL, and Brandon Sanderson completes the series using Jordan's notes. A nanosecond of silence, and onward. During book 12, The Gathering Storm, Rand channels the true power, making him both crazy strong and also kinda just crazy. Uh, plus, remember the voices in his head since the beginning? Book 13, so close, The Towers of Midnight, delivers more fighting and alliances. Egwene bonds with and marries Gawain Tracan, Elaine's brother. Yay, happiness! That can only mean, yep, bad shit is coming. Book 14, A Memory of Light, gives us the final battle, aka Tarman Gaidon. After some serious diplomacy, Rand convinces the world's nations to fight with him. Elaine is his general, Egwene leads the eyes to die, and Matt heads up the Shan Chan. Gawain dies a hero, after which Egwene goes ham, killing herself in order to take a ton of bad guys with her. Meanwhile, Rand takes a trip out of space and time to battle Shaitan and defeats him forever, or at least until the wheel spins and the story starts all over again. And that's it. 14 books, and we didn't even cover Lanfear, Tom Marilyn, Tuan, La and the White Cloaks, A New Spring, Brigida, and the Heroes of the Horn. I mean, hopefully they all get screen time in the new series being made by Sony. What are your favorite parts that we missed? What do you hope to see in the new series? Let us know in the comments and subscribe for more videos.